On the night of November 7, 1990, more than 40 people standing on a hotel rooftop in Montreal, Canada, shared a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Above them, in the night sky, an enormous oval of light, described by many as a mothership, hovered silently for more than two hours. And these eyewitnesses were all part of the most significant mass UFO sighting in Canadian history. UFO sightings by multiple witnesses are extremely rare. Perhaps the largest mass sighting occurred in 1991, when hundreds of people in Mexico City all reported seeing the same UFO appear and reappear over a one-week period. But despite hours of videotaped footage and eyewitness accounts, the Mexico sightings were never investigated by a single military or governmental agency. And in Montreal, the largest mass sighting in Canadian history is receiving the same lack of attention from the very people who could hold the key to unlocking one of the world's most profound UFO mysteries. It happened on a foggy November night in 1991. More than 40 people all shared a stunning experience. I saw this, uh, this thing. It was not looking like a, an object at all. It... Stunned. There's no other word. I was stunned. Bernard Gannett said that he saw the UFO as he hurried home from a late night at the office. It was more like a kind of pencil of light. It was a greenish color, but uh, looking very odd. Guests at the Montreal Bonaventure Hotel reported seeing the UFO while swimming in the rooftop pool. Lifeguard Lynn St. Pierre was on duty that night. So I stepped outside, I looked at the lights, and I was kind of scared because I didn't know what it was. So I went back in. I said, somebody pinched me because I don't believe what I see. This is a photograph of the object they all saw. Shrouded by a thick blanket of fog, the UFO appeared to hover low in the night sky for nearly three hours. My first reaction while driving was, well, it's probably some kind of a promotional stunt for the Olympic Stadium, you know, probably a game or something. I saw about, I would say, um, six, seven, eight spots within um, the shape of an egg. I could even hear the sound the thing was making. It was a very uh, definite purring sound, you know, some, some kind of a... Uh, Every corner that I went, I had th that thing over my head. I was puzzled, basically. I said, you know, what is this thing? But never, never did I think that I was seeing a, a UFO of some sort, you know, or, or that this thing would, would be coming from God knows where. Eyewitnesses called Montreal's largest French-language newspaper, La Presse. A reporter and photographer were dispatched to the hotel rooftop. I believe that I have seen uh, lights or glimmers. Uh, <laughs> but I cannot say at all what it is. A nearby construction site was lit with spotlights pointed skyward. Some eyewitnesses dismissed what they were seeing as the light's reflection in the fog. After those lights were shut down, uh, the phenomenon, the, the lights uh, remained in the sky, so it was not a reflection of some sort. Constable Moray received the first reports of a UFO sighting. He called the airport and the military to see if they were picking up the object on radar. They were not. Well, in my experience, I, I did see uh, a fair bit of, uh, of everything, um, but I, I never encountered anything similar to that. It did not disappear quickly, it faded away type of thing. The next morning, a cursory account of the UFO sighting, written by Jules Beliveau, was published in La Presse, accompanied by one of the pictures taken by photographer Marcel Laroche from the hotel rooftop. Bernard Gannett read that article and realized that what he had seen the night before needed further investigation. The police were unresponsive, so Gannett contacted aerial anomalies expert, Dr. Richard Haynes. One of the things that's important about this sighting is the number of highly credible eyewitnesses that uh, later drew pictures of what they saw. Uh, they all pretty much saw the same thing. Well, why is that significant? because it says it is not hallucination. Dr. Haynes examined the color negatives of the UFO photographs. He also analyzed digital enhancements of the images, which yielded controversial results. We are talking here about an object. It was not a light reflection, let's say from a man-made lights on the ground. During their investigation, 
Gannett and Haynes also discovered that a military base, a few miles from the hotel, had experienced an unexplained power failure on the night of the UFO sightings. The base experienced a 12,000 volt lead failure for a period of time. I find that very interesting. A computer mock-up of the UFO was created based on measurements done on site. It was determined that the UFO could have been over 6,000 feet wide. The calculations and an exhaustive research report went to more than 50 organizations. Not one responded. That's significant. That a large object could hover over downtown Montreal, a major metropolitan uh, area of North America, and be seen by so many people pictures drawn of it, photographs taken of it, and no official response. That, to me, is fascinating. It was something uh, quite extraordinary. They had the feeling that it was not from here, that it was different. Based on my experience as a police officer, I, I really can't say what the origin of these lights was. I'll remember it for the rest of my life, that's for sure. But uh, since I made a lot of interviews, Everybody's asking me questions and recognizing me in the street. They won't stop me, but they look at me like I'm a UFO. Uh, it changed my life in that kind of way. I know that I've seen something, I've heard the thing, and uh, no way someone's gonna convince me that I've seen uh, some kind of a tricky lighting pattern. I mean, there was an object up there. Uh, it corresponds to the, uh, the descriptions that were taken from the other people on site, and uh, I'll never forget it, essentially. Although the lights hovered over Montreal for nearly three hours and between 40 and 75 eyewitnesses were present, no official government or military unit was dispatched to investigate. One wonders what it would take for authorities to feel a sighting is worthy of investigation.